Hello, my name is Michael Wishaw and I'm a continence physician at the Royal Melbourne Hospital working with the Royal Park Continence Service and the Royal Melbourne Urology Department. I am pleased to be asked to share with you my thoughts about the assessment and guide to management of the neurogenic bladder. The lower uni tract is controlled by the nervous system, both central and peripheral. Therefore, damage to the nervous system by illness or trauma may result in disturbance of lower uni tract function, including incontinence. So we talk about neurogenic lower uni tract dysfunction. This of course can occur at any age. The nature of this disturbance depends on the site and extent of the neuronal injury. Thus, talking generally, any type of dysfunction may occur. This is critical to understand in any one patient as this is what guides management. The most common dysfunction is detrusor overactivity, but the detrusor may be underactive or indeed both overactive and underactive. Sensation may be diminished. If there is damage to the spinal cord above the sacral outflow, there may be incoordination between the bladder and sphincter function in addition. This is called detrusor sphincter dysinergia or DSD. Especially in sacral spinal conditions, compliance may be impaired. Here, bladder pressures rise with filling. This can be dangerous and potentially lead to hydronephrosis and renal failure. Stress or sphincter weakness incontinence may also occur, but is very much less common as a neurogenic feature. So lower urinary tract dysfunction may range from completely absent to quite complex. Most patients with a cerebral cause have detrusor overactivity. Stroke is the most common. More than 50% of those admitted to hospital with stroke will also have detrusor overactivity as part of the presentation. This has a strong correlation with stroke disability and residential care placement. The dysfunction may be more complex in those with Parkinson's disease, but again, the common feature is detrusor overactivity. Management is often also more complex. Incontinence is usually a late feature in patients with Alzheimer's disease, where the explanation may relate to the impaired cognition resulting in inappropriate voiding. However, many with dementia have a vascular component in the etiology and also have detrusor overactivity. In multiple sclerosis, there are usually cerebral lesions, often causing detrusor overactivity, but coincident spinal cord lesions are frequently present. Detrusor overactivity and coincident detrusor sphincter dysinergia are common in patients with spinal pathology involving the cervical, thoracic and lumbar spine. Trauma, multiple sclerosis and cord compression are the most common. Multiple sclerosis is often more complex though and where detrusor underactivity may also occur or even be predominant. Spina bifida is another complex condition with most patients having sacral cord damage resulting in several dysfunctions, but commonly poor compliance is the most concerning dysfunction. Detrusor underactivity or even acontractility may arise from diabetes mellitus, from lumbar disc prolapse causing corda equina syndrome, and also from radical pelvic surgery or trauma. Special comment should be made about complications in patients with a spinal cause for their lower urinary tract dysfunction. Renal impairment, although uncommon, is a well-recognised complication. This is because of the very high pressures that can be generated in the bladder that may lead to hydronephrosis. It is most especially a concern in patients with spinal trauma and spina bifida. Urinary tract infections are more likely to occur in those with impaired emptying, but also in those with high bladder pressures. Infection can then provoke even higher pressures. Infection with high pressure is a bad combination to enhance the likelihood of renal failure. Patients with spinal pathology at or above the T4 to 6 level, especially those with trauma, may have autonomic dysreflexia. This is a potentially fatal disorder with severe autonomic disturbance causing a dangerous rise in blood pressure. But a word of caution, a dangerous rise in blood pressure may actually be relatively small in absolute terms. It is provoked by a noxious stimulus below the level of the injuries, such as a block catheter, urinary infection, urethral instrumentation, 
or faecal impaction. Autonomic dysreflexia is a medical emergency. It needs to be managed as a priority with ensuring the head is up, rapid identification and resolution of the noxious stimulus and sublingual glycerol trinitrate spray or tablet. Neurological disorders are common, so neurogenic incontinence is also common. However, in people with a neurological disorder, the cause of incontinence may not be neurogenic, and this should always be considered in a patient's workup. Assessment should follow standard protocols and principles, but may be more comprehensive in neurogenic patients, including a greater use of imaging such as urinary tract ultrasound, as well as urodynamics. As with assessment, management of patients with neurogenic lower urinary tract dysfunction should also follow standard principles. Those with straightforward detrusor overactivity should be treated as for idiopathic overactive bladder with conservative strategies which may include lifestyle changes, bladder training, pelvic floor physiotherapy and pharmacotherapy. Pharmacotherapy is usually with anticholinergic agents where tolerated. The beta-3 agonist Myrobegron is a new agent that may also be useful and is especially worth considering in patients with dementia as it is not expected to impact negatively on cognition. Management of other patients with more complex urinary tract dysfunction is more challenging. While symptom control is important from the patient perspective, a fundamental principle in patients with spinal pathology is to control bladder pressure to prevent complications such as infection and renal damage. Intensive treatment with pharmacotherapy is a strong focus here and may include treatment with botulinum toxin A into the bladder wall. Intermittent self-catheterization is often beneficial and very encouraged, certainly in patients with spinal disorders. Use of indwelling catheterization is avoided where possible, especially because of potential complications with long-term use, although may well be necessary. Although often complex and challenging, assessment and management of patients with neurogenic lower urinary tract dysfunction based on basic principles can lead to excellent outcomes and quality of life. Thank you for viewing this video.